Lights, camera, action. Good evening, Game Master. So you want to run games as gripping as your favorite movies? To transport your players to another world, having them forget where they are so they can be fully absorbed in the unfurling story? In short, you want it cinematic. Filmmaking is the art of immersion, and that's exactly what I want for my TTRPG games. So yeah, maybe cinema can help. After all, it's got well over a century of experience. I studied some filmmaking back in college. Was I good at it? Eh, I maybe spent a bit too much time playing D&D instead. But that attitude can spawn a really fun hybrid approach. Years later, everything I know about filmmaking, you bet I tried to integrate it to TTRPG. And I've brought you the results of my incessant overthinking. Tonight we focus on one goal, immersion. By adopting the workflow of a director and approaching the game visually with the eye of a cinematographer. And we'll do that using two elements from the filmmaker's arsenal, scene and camera. So grab your camera, director, and let's make a freaking movie. Scene. Remember that word? It's important. In film, a story is told through distinct scenes, each contributing a specific piece to the overall narrative. We jump through time and everything in between the scenes is cut away. In contrast, most TTRPG games are kind of a meandering but linear sequence of events. Let's see an example. A messenger comes to find you. You are urgently requested at your good friend Mrs. Peacock's house. You make your way through the bustling cobblestone streets and arrive at Mrs. Peacock's opulent manor. The butler lets you in and he leads you to Mrs. Peacock's chambers. Upon arriving, you see broken furniture, emptied drawers, a splatter of blood, but no Mrs. Peacock. Okay, cool. Prepare for the one advice that was drilled into my head in film school. Don't worry, this does not mean murdering Mrs. Peacock. Killing your darlings simply means cutting off the excess, even if it's stuff you're kind of attached to. I'm looking at you, world-building addicts. And in that example right there, there were lots of parts that didn't contribute much to the action. So let's start cutting. Walking to the street, did anything relevant happen? No, cut. Ringing the bell, greeting the butler, cut. Walking upstairs, cut. Opening the door, cut. If this were a movie, we would immediately cut to Mrs. Peacock's messy bedroom. And if I were to rent this as a one-shot, I would probably just skip the messenger and start right at the crime scene. Structuring your games into scenes is a huge step towards mastering pacing. If something is not contributing to plot or tone, it doesn't need to be there. So free up that space to make room for your players to do cool stuff. A little time skip or ellipsis never kill anyone. Except, you know, your darlings. So scenes are the building blocks of any good movie, but there's a matter just as important as how to start one. That's when to end it. Even though it will ensure that your game doesn't lose momentum, it is kind of hard to ascertain when to start wrapping up a scene. So here's a good rule of thumb. A scene has accomplished its purpose once it had a change of state or beat. So like a significant shift within the emotions, circumstances or objectives within a scene. At the start of the scene, you're looking for clues to find your missing friend, Mrs. Peacock. But then you find an envelope on the dresser with your name on it. It says that your dear friend was taken to take revenge on you. The emotional stakes have completely changed and so does the state of the scene. Most often you don't control how the beat changes. The players and dice do that for you. And then you can start wrapping up the scene, unless another change is looming. Are you gonna tell them the bad news? I don't know what you're talking about. You cruel being, you're about to fill them with anxiety and you won't even admit to it. Okay, fine, there is a tough to swallow pill here. This means that sometimes you're gonna have to tell your players to start wrapping things up. Which I know the idea of interrupting your players can be scary. It is the curse of game masters to be, by design, people pleasers. The prospect of disappointing my players fills me with unspeakable dread. Will they hate the game? Will they start to hate me? But you don't have to be scared to end the scene. Let me ease your anxiety with three things. One, everything that needed to be said probably already has been said. Two, if you wait on your players to stop coming up with ideas, there's a chance you will wait forever. And sometimes players will even keep trying to come up with stuff because they're waiting on you to give them a cue. And three, there are ways to do it that are not rude. You can be gentle about it. Or even use questions or prompts in order to let players wrap up the scene on their own terms. As this conversation with your friend comes to a close, what's the last thought that lingers on your mind? As the dust settles, what's the last image we see of your character here? How do you think this scene concludes? Can you describe the atmosphere in the room as this scene comes to an end? And above all, trust your players. They will tell you if they need more time to wrap up. If a player is trying to initiate a new change in beats, you should let them. Your job is to allow players to drive the narrative, while being ready to steer the game if momentum or pacing requires it. 
You wrap up when the game is stalling, not when it is thriving. Hello, Val. Oh my god. How did you find me here? Your incompetence summoned me. Why aren't you taking inspiration from the greatest genre cinema ever created? Mm-hmm. Kaiju movies. Now that's real cinema. You want kaijus in your TTRPG games? You know what? I can see that. I'm glad to see you can listen to reason. Here, you'll need this. Moonzoon is a 5th edition campaign setting spanning across 4 whole books. In this remote archipelago filled with tales of pirates, swashbucklers, shamans and ancient ruins, 12 enigmatic god moons shape reality and exert their influence on the world. For action seekers, Moonzoon uses Gyoko's kaiju system to bring you epic multi-tiered battles against the moon avatars, which by the way don't have to end in death. If you gather enough clues, you might just be able to appease the avatar. And for those who love roleplay, you can up the stakes with a deck of moon cards that bring in dramatic and unexpected twists. Will you embrace the power of the card or forge your own path? And there's so much more, new races, monsters, magic items, subclasses, and a full-length campaign. Alright, I'm in. Just one thing, are you going to become a recurring character? Are you going to stop trying to exorcise me? Well, you have good recommendations. You can stay. For now. Moonzoon got funded within 45 minutes of launching and has already reached a bunch of stretch goals. If you'd like to pledge, you've got until the 8th of August and you'll find the link right in the description. Thanks a bunch again to Moonzoon for sponsoring this video, let's now get back into our topic. We've talked about scenes or building blocks. Now let's bring out the tool to chisel them into something great, the camera. The camera is everything relative to your description game. In rough terms, it's trying to think of your game visually. One notion that completely blew my mind came from one video by Skylar the ADHDM. In it, he talks about storyboarding as part of game prep. If not familiar with the term, storyboards are illustrations as a way to plan out and visualize your movie. The idea of using that as prep for TTRPG has so much potential. But even if you don't want to draw and can't use a pencil to save your life, just the idea of thinking of your game visually is already an immersion game changer. For every scene, try to picture a strong visual to keep in mind. The fireplace, blazing bright and strong, is the only source of light in this room of the manor. Your host, this devil in disguise, is backlit and silhouetted by the dancing flames, the details of his face obscured. The light of the fire stretches his shadow to almost reach you. He holds and swirls a glass of whiskey throughout the entire conversation. Now that's a striking image. But maybe you want to take it one step further and dive into more advanced camera work. Let's make Abria Iyengar proud. Camera work is mostly a way to turn your narration and description game more cinematic and immersive. You can get really creative with it and each use of it can serve multiple purposes. First, you can use it to give some context. And every once in a while, you can even use it to show something that the player characters don't see. In a cyberpunk mini campaign I played, the GM opened the game with a scene at the very top of a skyscraper. None of us were present in this scene, but this is what the camera showed. A minion we had previously escaped from had come to report to the bad guy. And to punish the minion for letting us escape, the big bad held them over the void and let them drop to their death the entire height of the skyscraper. This was great because our characters had heard of the big bad but hadn't actually met them. And as players we hadn't yet grasped how high the stakes were and how despicable this person was. Using the camera allowed the game master to communicate that to us without requiring a confrontation. I could also see this as a great way to start a campaign. It provides context for the game visually rather than through a big out of character exposition dump. But use this one sparingly and keep it short. The real focus is the players. Second, you can use the camera as a framework to structure your narrations more easily. If you struggle to structure concise but appealing descriptions, this is your new rule of thumb. Zoom in when you start the scene and zoom out when you end it. The English and their cannons have come to put an end once and for all to this pirate island. Establishing shot, screams, gunfire and the cling of swords echo in the harbor. Now zoom in on the details and what the characters are actually doing. A ragtag group of mercenaries run through narrow streets, sticking to the shadows and using the commotion to make their escape. Or we can use our camera to smoothly transition from one scene to another. Instead of just calling it out of character and breaking immersion, you can do it by following one element from one scene to another. Like a rat scuttering away from the street where the players walk into rusty pipes and emerging in the sewers where we now see the players carefully treading forward. It can be via transforming one element within the scene. 
For example, focusing on the flowers inside the room. We see them wilt and each of their petals dropping, indicating that several days have passed. Or maybe creating a mirror with one element from this scene and an element from another. This one is especially fun as a roleplay prompt. As the camera dwells on a framed picture of Mrs. Peacock, ask a player to set the stage. Ask them to describe a scene from their character's past which illustrates what Mrs. Peacock meant to them. This approach kills two birds with one stone and gives your players some extra spotlight. And finally, don't hesitate to give your players control of the camera. Encourage them to describe their character's thoughts or body language, to ask for a flashback or call for a specific scene. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. We often see game masters as the directors who create the story for the players who are the audience. But we should reframe it instead as the players and game master together who create a story for an unseen audience. The camera that we take turns operating should be seen as the manifestation of that. As often, we part ways with a word of warning. Being too extreme with this approach is not without risks. Cinema is a passive media, which is not the case in TTRPG. A cinematic lens can make our games more immersive, but there is a point of diminishing returns where descriptions no longer immerse but begin to feel like cutscenes. Ultimately, awesome shots and transitions add to a movie, but they shouldn't distract from the story itself, which is driven by the protagonists. All we're doing here is bringing the spotlight to them, but they're the ones the audience is here for. On this note, have a good evening, and let's hope you call to makes it to the end credits.